Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about some tools that I got to check the hardness level of your blades. Specifically, Rockwell hardness. And uh, these are the little tools I'll show you in a minute. This is the hard shell case that I got with these tools. It's actually really nice. Keeps them organized and safe. Velcro. Have a little closure on there. Dun, 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 dun. This is not gonna be as good in general as a Rockwell tester that, that shows you the exact Rockwell hardness of your knives. But these, you're gonna be able to take these because they are hardened precisely to 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, and 65 Rockwell. You can take these, try and dig into your blades with these, check right after heat treat, grind off all the decarb, you check with these files to see what your range of hardness is. You wanna kinda of be somewhere in here. So this is uh, 60 right here, 60 Rockwell, and then you have this, which is, is that upside down? No, it's not. This is 65 Rockwell. You kinda of wanna be somewhere in between these two, and if you uh, have these, then you can kinda of tell. The idea is that if you are at or above 60 Rockwell, then a 60 Rockwell tester is not going to be able to bite into that steel nearly as much as if it's like 55 Rockwell. Then the 65 Rockwell, if your blade is at 60 Rockwell, the 65 Rockwell should be able to bite into it. So it kind of tells you where you are. If the 55 Rockwell tester digs into it, you might want to check and make sure you, you don't have any decarb on your blade or try and reheat treat, I guess. So you can follow specific heat treat instructions like you'll find on the internet, on different apps that tell you heat treating instructions different books that'll tell you heat treating instructions. All that stuff is great and will get you reliable results if you follow those rules. But if you really want to kind of check the range you're in, these are a good tool to have. This is the uh, company that I got. I'm not sponsored by this company or anything like that. This is just the ones I got. I'll put a link down below for uh, this particular set. And uh, that is an affiliate link, so if you click that, Buy this set then it financially helps me too but this i'm not paid by this company at all but this is a very good kit to have as a knife maker so we're going to take this and we're going to test the hardness level of this blade this is uh, one of my woodsman pack knives they are 01 tool steel really great steel and it should be around 60 rockwell after heat treating it so i heat treated it around 1500 degrees and then i tempered it around 415 degrees to 425 somewhere in there for two hours and then two more hours and that should theoretically get me around 60 rockwell but since i don't have a rockwell tester in my shop i can't really know for sure but now that i have these i can at least kind of know that i'm i'm heat treating right again good tool to have we're going to test it out on this blade right now All right, y'all, so something that's good to remember is that when you heat treat a blade, when you quench it and you heat it up in an atmospheric forge or kiln like Gen Ken or even heat, uh, what happens is you develop decarb. And decarb is when the carbon goes into solution, and that's a good thing for quenching, but when it goes into solution, you lose a little bit of that carbon on the outside of your blade. So the very surface of your steel is gonna lose some of that carbon and you're gonna have a very thin layer of very soft steel or even pure iron, I guess. Basically, that means that you're not gonna get an accurate reading for a hardness test and you definitely don't want that on your edge for your blade or on the surface of the bevels or anything like that. So you wanna make sure your blades are clean before you go to test them or yeah, before you finish them. That's why you leave a little bit of, of meat on your edge when you quench. So you got a little bit of thickness left on the, on the edge when you quench so that you have some material to remove to get rid of the decarb and get into that nice hard steel. So we're gonna go to the disc sander, 80 grit, and we're going to sand off a lot of that 
oxide and decarb, get it nice and shiny and be able to test the hardness level. All right, so now that we've got this thing all cleaned up, we can actually take it and test it because um, we've gotten through all the decarb, and that is good. Okay, so now that we've gotten through the decarb, we're gonna start with the 65 Rockwell because I know it's above 60. And if I start with a 55, uh, for instance, it might damage the file, and uh, I don't, I don't wanna hurt the file set. So we're gonna start with 65 because I know that's gonna dig in. Um, at least it should. It might be uh, somewhere between 60 and 65 because I leave my blades a little on the harder end because I want them to be really good with edge retention. So we'll see what these are at. All right, so I've got my 65 hardness tester here and we're just gonna try that on the edge. We're gonna start here then I'm going to try a little bit here just to see if the thickness makes a difference. So again, we're going to start on the edge and then we're going to go up to the spine because the spine is a little bit thicker. And so we're going to just going to see if that makes a difference at all. Um, so we're going to start with the edge and see if it, see if it bites. Probably better to go against the edge. And that's actually not biting as much as I thought it would. I doubt the 60 will even touch it, honestly. Nope. Yep, that is a hard, hard, hard blade. Okay, so maybe this isn't a great example of that, but let me show you what it looks like when you have a softer material and you dig in with like a 65 or a 60. Um, apparently this is somewhere very close to 65 Rockwell, which they've performed really well, so I'm happy with them. But that is on the harder end. Just to give you guys another example, here is uh, a blade before it's heat treated, and it's completely dead soft. Ooh, yeah, so that digs in like crazy. If you can see that right there, just dug a, just one, one pass and it digs a giant ditch in the corner of the blade there. And that's 55 Rockwell, so let's go with 40, just see what that does. Yep, so even 40 Rockwell will dig into this um, dead soft steel. Um, so we're gonna, I've done the edge of this, now I'm gonna do the top, just see what, see what the difference is here. Mm -hmm. So that definitely dug in. You can see that was 65 Rockwell. You can see it's done a little bit of digging into that corner. And uh, so it's definitely less than 65 right there. But I think it's definitely more than 60. Because the 60 Rockwell is barely, just barely hitting it. It's just barely doing anything to it. I honestly think that this blade is above 60, um, definitely below 65. Let's just hit it with this again just to see what happens. Yeah, so on the edge might be a little bit harder. The 65 is definitely digging into that edge, as you can see. It's definitely digging in right here. Um, you can kind of see where it's dug in a little bit. And uh, so it's somewhere in between 65 and 60. Here's 60 again. and literally just skating across the surface. And you can, like I said, you can do some damage to the files eventually if you just keep on yeeting it on that steel, on that hardened steel, but that's what it's made for. So don't be too afraid. So I hope that helps.
that's a good uh, look at, at how to use those things. So less than 40 hardness Rockwell, somewhere between 60 and 65 Rockwell for this. So there we go. These are really great little testers for your uh, steel and should provide a kind of a good reading on where your hardness is for your blades. If you guys want something like this, there is a link in the description below for this exact set. And you guys can go grab those. Again, that's an affiliate link. And so I do get a little bit of a financial benefit from that, but it's honestly, it's not much. And I really just, I like this set. So that's it for that. Um, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it, learned something. And uh, if you guys did enjoy it, make sure you hit the like, hit subscribe, hit the alarm if you guys want to be notified of future videos. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you guys buy these or have bought these and have experience with them. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. I'll see you in the next one. I also want to mention that if you guys want to see more in-depth tutorials on how I make the knives that I make, then make sure you click the link below for my Patreon where I teach uh, all sorts of things from sand mine making, from hand forging blades, using a power hammer or press, making Damascus, doing hidden tang, full tang, integral, all the, all the stuff that I do. Um, I teach more in depth on my Patreon as far as knife making. So if you guys want to learn more about how I make the knives that I make, tips and tricks and all sorts of things like that, then make sure you click the link below for my Patreon. There's a new video every single month and you gain access to all, I think 36 existing videos that are on there now on all sorts of different things. So make sure you go check that out, link below.